Hello, my name is João Alves. I'm a student here at Engineering Physics at EIST, and I'm also working at CFTP under the supervision of Professor Gustavo Branco. My thesis is called the Multi-X Models Flavor and CP Violation, consists on the study of extensions to the standard model using extra X particles. So, what do we mean by this? Let's find together. First, let's try to understand a, a simple word, flavor. What do we mean by this? Well, as I assume you all know, matter is made of atoms, which in themselves are made of protons, neutrons and electrons. However, we physicists like to play with things and smash them together. So, we throw the protons at each other, and we found that indeed they are made of smaller particles, quarks. Indeed, they are made of two types of quarks, up and down. Besides the quarks up, down and the electron, there is also an additional particle called neutrino, which was needed to introduce to explain some mystic energy in some experiments. Now, everything seems simple, right? Four particles, one quark up, one quark down, one electron and one neutrino, right? What more do we need? Unfortunately, nature was not so kind to us, and it made three copies of each of these particles. They are all identically the same, except that some of them are heavier than the others. Just bad luck, right? So, what is flavor? Flavor is the property which identifies which particle it is. So essentially, it works like your ID. A uh, quark up of the first generation will have a certain flavor, which is its ID, and an electron of another generation will have another flavor, which is its ID. Now, both inside the same generation and also ranging from different generations, there's a big range of masses of all of these particles. To try to understand why this is so, and also to try to find relations between all of these masses, is what is right now called the flavor puzzle, and it's still an open question in physics. So, now that hopefully both of us understand what flavor is, let's talk about CP violation. Now, CP violation has two components, the C and the P. Let's break them down individually. The C is simply charge conjugation, and this is quite simple. You pick up a particle, you take its charge, and you put a minus sign before. Not too hard, right? Now, to talk about the P. The P corresponds to the parity symmetry, which is just a reflection under the mirror. So, if I have a system like this, and then I reflect it under a mirror like this, we classically expect that they will behave in the same manner. Unfortunately, this is not true at the quantum level, so if you look at the fundamental particles of physics, they do not behave like this. So, what happens when you combine C with P? Well, we get CP. And what the CP does? Well, it transforms matter into antimatter. And when they touch... Now, if CP were to be conserved, that would mean that I would behave in the exactly same way as the anti-version of me. How do we understand both CP violation and flavor? Let's try to understand the X mechanism that everybody is talking about in the news. In particle physics, theories are built from symmetries of the universe. If we have a universe which is perfectly symmetric, unfortunately we can't get mass. This would mean that you could eat all the pieces you want. However, I do know that if I eat too much pizza, I get fatter. So the universe cannot be totally symmetric. This means that we need a mechanism that will break us this symmetry. This is what is called the X mechanism. To understand the X mechanism, I will tell you a, a little story. So, let's say that I enter a bar and there's a beer left alone in the right and a beer left alone in the left. This system is completely symmetric. I can swap the right side with the left side and nothing changes. Now, if you were to know me well, you know that after 30 seconds I would be drinking one of these beers. This means that the symmetry is no longer there. You can no longer swap the right with the left. This breaking of symmetry is what we right now call X mechanism. Now that we both understand what I'm talking about, why do I say that I want to extend the standard model by increasing the number of X particles? Remember CP violation and how if it were conserved, matter would behave in the same way as antimatter. To explain this, we need CP violation. Well, the standard model is kind of good for us. It has a little bit of CP violation. Unfortunately, it's not enough. The good thing about multi Higgs is that they have much more CP violation, which can help us with this problem. The second good thing about multi Higgs is they can help us with the flavor puzzle. This is a little bit contradictory. I'm adding more things into the theory and I'm saying that somehow I'm gonna make it simpler. What do I mean? Well, you can think about the Higgs in relation to the flavor puzzle as Lego pieces that build everything. If you have more Lego pieces, you can build things better. This is why multi Higgs really help us with the flavor puzzle. So, to summarize everything that I've said, this is a very exciting field, which is expanding the frontier of our knowledge. Right now, we have one of the biggest investments in the history of science running, and we have good hope to find more scalars. This means that there is a lot of work to be done if you want to join me in my quest. 